and the Stars winning last night. Bob Thompson, former Fox Sports CEO and executive, joins us on 365 Sports. Bob, thank you so much for your time. So what's, what is the, the, the real story on TNT, the NBA? Did they fall asleep at the wheel with that, with NBC getting what appears to be what's going to be their deal? Hey, thanks for having me on again. Um, one thing you should note is if the Mavs tonight, you have to wait like 10 days for the yeah. first game in the championship yeah. series. Yeah, that's going to be fun, huh? Yeah. Um, Warner Brothers Discovery. Um, I think uh, there were some misplays definitely on the part of Warner Brothers Discovery, including a couple of years ago when Mr. Zaslov came out and said, we don't really need the NBA. Which was not, probably not the brightest thing you want to do um, when you're about to re- renew what's one of your, if not your, most important sports rights agreement that you have. And so I think that might have sent a message to Adam Silver and his folks. And, you know, they, they started plotting a way to, you know, structure a deal that would not necessarily include Warner Brothers Discovery. And I think that is kind of where we're sitting at right now. How, what is the domino effect here on everything else? If um, So TNT, obviously, you know, they, they, they sub-license some games for the CFP, which ESPN kind of, um, is, I'm sure, thrilled about because they're, that's, they can turn more of a profit on that. But what does this mean for maybe future deals with NFL and college football and everybody else? If the NBA is moving this way, does this have indications in the market to you? Well, I think what, what Adam has been able to do and Bill Koenig, who's kind of his top lieutenant when it relates to television matters, is structure a deal where they had a number of both linear cable and broadcast networks in the uh, and streamer with uh, Peacock, um, Amazon Prime, all bidding on the packages. And so I, they were able to, you know, even in a time of kind of declining regular season NBA ratings, increase the package by two and a half times, where they'll be bringing in about seven, seven and a half billion dollars. Um, whether or not WBD gets an option, an opportunity, or chooses to match one of those deals with their back end rights. We'll have to wait and see. But you do have some kind of downstream uh, repercussions. And I think the first one, as you mentioned, was uh, the picked up, the WBD picked up. And I, that was interesting to me, kind of an odd one-off, you know, few games. They're probably going to get the games that are up against the NFL, the NFL games on that Saturday. Um, so that's interesting. And then you look down the road and say, okay, where are they going to spend this two some odd billion dollars that WBD might have been going to spend? And the next thing that's coming up that's really kind of big is the UFC. And so maybe they have made a decision that for streaming on Max and their, their supposed coming sports streaming service that WBD is going to want to pile in on the UFC side and run that on TNT and, um, on, on the streaming services. So it, there's always a effect that kind of plays out over the next couple of years. But as far as primary prime properties that are coming up, everything's getting kind of wrapped up. You know, there's some baseball rights that'll be hanging out there. ESPN rejects their Sunday night contract, but for the most part, everything's tied up other than like the UFC. So Bob, everybody's lamenting the possible death of the the TNT broadcast crew, but it just stands to reason that uh, Ernie might not join them after all the time with Turner sports. And he's kind of, Refer to that, although who knows? You make the right offer. Uh, although he's getting later in his career, he could always join. But, I mean, it is as simple as just saying, hey, Charles, Kenny, Shaq, just head on over to Amazon or to, to wherever the, 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 I guess the contract ends up. Yeah, that's uh, – they're in a very enviable position, uh, all of the guys. Uh, Ernie, if he wants to go along, I, I, I understand he's saying he's going to stay, but – the other guys are, are pretty much free agents, and, and maybe they move the thing lock, stock, and barrel, including producers, over to a new network. That's that's not unheard of. You know, when, when Fox started the NFL Sunday show, they, you know, they clipped a bunch of guys from other other networks and, and, and brought them over. And 
um, it's it's not unheard of, and, and especially with a show with that kind of following, that kind of a chemistry, which would take somebody as a startup years and years and years to get that kind of um, you know a show uh, con- that's consistently you know so so good and so so much better than anything else around the NBA. I think uh, they're going to have plenty of bidders. Did you see them when they? kind of finally got that group together with Ernie Kenny and then Barkley. And of course there's Shaq and among others. Is that the greatest studio host group ever? In, in, in the NBA, no doubt. I think there's been some, some pretty good um, NFL groups. The Fox NFL group was, Mm -hmm. was pretty good. I think the, uh, the, the Sunday ESPN show with, uh, Boomer and Tom Jackson, that was always a pretty, pretty good oh, yeah. show as well. Yeah. So there, there's been some others, but, but within the NBA, um, I, you know, I, even if you harken back to the NBA, you know, NBA on NBC, uh, with, um, you know, Maude Rashad and those folks, sure. um, I, I still don't think that touches, touches what, what you've got over at Turner right now. So, Bob, I'm sitting there, there, there. Someone put this graphic out, and it made me just realize, and we all know how ever popular and powerful the NFL is. But of all of the professional sports, hockey, baseball, everything, um, uh, and then the NFL and, and the NBA, there are like 12 or 15 contracts with total dollars. How in the world did the NFL become so, like, massively more popular for example their least popular or their least expensive uh or money maker 1.1 billion with amazon prime video is still higher than everybody else and almost as high as both of the nba contracts and there's five others higher than that how in the world did it get to be that big i have two words (laughs) gambling okay um Fantasy. There you go. Um, those are, without a doubt, two things that really push the NFL. I think you know Roger Goodell has been masterful in um, you know, creating uh, extra packages when he needed an extra package. You know, it's amazing the guy could just you know touch the change on boom. We got a couple of games we can sell <laughs> Netflix on a Christmas day. <laughs> you know, it's just like that. And so he's always got something to you know throw throw some crumbs out to people. Because everybody's interested, because and especially you know for Roger and, and the folks at the NFL and the owners, they want to see how this whole streaming thing can translate. Because you know their their next deal has a number of years to go, but it also has an out in like four or five years, I think, or, or maybe six years, seven years, that they can they can take they can open it back up. And depending on what happens with the kind of conversion to streaming versus you know the falling apart of the linear and the bundle and what all these streaming packages are going to end up doing. They might want to, they might want to reshuffle the deck. And I think that the NFL has been masters at, at always creating a situation where somebody's on the outside looking in and wanting to get in. And the last one that was out there was kind of Netflix. And so uh, now that they're in, it's going to be interesting to see w- what they do and if there's a way they can create you know, somebody else who, who really wants to play, which is then ultimately what drives up the price. Bob, do you think that college football can, can benefit uh, and turn it at all? Like, you know, outside of the playoff that they've already, that they've already got. In terms of television revenue. Yeah. Maybe, you know, now that they, you know, you said you're going to go UFC, but they have some, places to go right i mean if they've got to fill some sports like they're making true tv all sports now right so would that would college sports be a place they could they could put some of that or is that not what they want to do well certainly it's possible i think you know it's interesting because turner has never really been in the college sports business other than the ncaa tournament you know we used to sub license some some one-off nfl regular or excuse me college regular season football games but other than the NCAA men's tournament, they've really never been too involved. Now, maybe these four first round games, um, or the two first round games this first year, and 
ultimately some quarters as well. Maybe that gets them into some things, but, um, but unfortunately, Paul, there's not a lot out there to buy right now. Mm-hmm. You know, the deal, the deals are all, all tied up. Now, maybe they could sublight from something from somebody like they did with the college football, but look, hey, here's something to think on that college football sublicense. Once the NFL came out and said, we're playing on that Saturday and we want the games on Fox and CBS or Fox and NBC, those guys immediately left as potential bidders on those, on those first round games. And so ESPN probably didn't have a whole lot of places to go other than air them all themselves. And so, uh, you know, the NFL is probably not thrilled with college football right now. Apparently there were discussions about this and the NFL wanted them to air two games on Friday night and two games on Saturday. And they kind of could have scheduled around each other, but the CFP was insistent on playing the three games on um, Friday or on Saturday. And so games, the NFL games that in the past have been on the NFL network um, have been switched to the, to, you mm-hmm. know, two broadcast networks and yeah, they're certainly flexing their muscles. Um, and I think there's gotta be some, some place to have a little bit of a meeting of the minds on this stuff, because as, if the NFL goes to 18 games and if the CFP goes to say 16 teams, you're going to have nothing but more conflicts and you're going to have to work together. And whether that means, the NFL uh, or the college football starts in week zero and maybe the NFL stays where they're at and pushes everything back and plays, believe it or not, the Super Bowl on President's Day weekend. Um, you create some opportunities where you wouldn't be up against each other so much, but they're going to have to get together on this scheduling thing. And I know it's probably just the first two years might be an issue because of where the dates fall. It's going to happen more and more as schedules expand. Bob, does any of the other stuff, all the extracurricular talk about uh, employees' status and uh, all the revenue sharing, does that fall in like the area of interest of the TV networks and the TV execs that are dealing with college football at all, or is that such a separate thing that it's just it's a separate thing that to really worry too much about? Let's see if I can answer, answer this in a way that doesn't cause me problems. Um, <laughs> So I was involved with the House case as an expert for the conferences in the NCAA. Okay. And the idea being that, you know, television never really purchased NIL. It came, it was, you know, they, 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 you know, they told us they had the rights. And so we never paid anything extra for it. It wasn't something we could sell if we wanted to, because it was just part and parcel of the agreement. I think if the co- colleges, think that and the conferences think that they're going to go to TV and just automatically get more money because they have to start paying, you know, 20, 20 to $30 million a year in um, payments. Um, I think they're sniffing up the wrong tree. You know, when, when a network buys the rights, they buy the rights to not only the game, but also to the images and the likeness of the players who play in that game. And also some minor promotional rights uh, to use those players to promote the game. So I think from the television standpoint, what's good is that it's, you know, hopefully all this noise is going to be settled down. And it seems like there's a path for resolution of this whole, um, you know, paying players or, or whatever, uh, compensating players, which I, I'm not in a disagreement with. I think that's a, it's a good thing and it's the right thing. But it's also nice to hopefully resolve these three cases and hopefully that the Judge Wilkin will will go ahead and do that and that there can be sort of a roadmap going forward, at least for some number of years, where we have some level of um, calmness, shall we say, and we can just worry about the games and hopefully realignment kind of quiet for a while and all the, all the lawsuits are kind of quiet for a while. We can just concentrate on the game. Last thing, I know you uh, are busy. That You helped with the Big Ten Network, correct, when you were at Fox? Yeah. Okay. Did you help the Pac-12 in any way? I know that's ESPN, but were you ever a part of anything with the Pac-12 Network, which is now completely dead? We 
propose to the Pac-12 that we do a similar setup to the Big Ten Network. Mm. Literally, the you know the blueprint. I could have taken the documents and just taken out Big Ten and put Pac-12 in. Right. They 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 told us they didn't want to go that way, and so we said, okay, oh. good luck. And we had the we had the broadcast rights that just expired this year. Right. Uh, in fact, I went to the last. I went to the last Pac-12 championship the other day. The baseball was here in Scottsdale. I went down and watched my Ducks lose their last game in the Pac-12. <laughs> um, they were selling all the merchandise for like five bucks. <laughs> the garage sale. Um, but no, we uh, – and then there was a couple of times when us or Fox and ESPN separately off, you know, gave them an opportunity to get out of it you know, after a number of years. And again, they declined the offer and, you know, kind of went their own way. So that's one of those uh, could have, should have, would have. Yeah. And, and why they are now where they are, which is extinct, which is uh, unbelievable. Right. Yeah. Not right. quite. Right. I mean, Oregon state and Washington state technically. Well, and, uh, but Bob, did, would you, uh, what did you make of the deal that Oregon state and Washington state were able to, to cobble and, and put together? I, I thought it was great. I think they did a good job. I, I, the commissioner um, did a great job. I think it's a good mix. You know, the CW, you know, it's, well, it's not the most well-known sports outlet. It's now got ACC. It's got NASCAR. It's got the golf, the live golf. It's got the Pac-12, uh, 11, I guess it's 11 games. And Fox has a couple that they're going to do. So I think it's great for them. I think uh, at this point for, for those two schools, uh, exposure was more important than money. You know, they're sitting on a pile of cash from the Pac-12, so they don't they didn't need a big TV deal. They need exposure and they need relevancy, so that if there is another shoe to drop in this whole realignment world, that they are uh, top of mind as potential candidates to maybe backfill for some somebody who's got wandering eyes. Always the great segment with Bob Thompson on many things: television, networks, etc., streaming. Bob, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. How much of that Pac-12 network stuff did you buy? <laughs> I was there for the Friday day. So they hadn't put it on sale oh, yet. Oh, so no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Missed that one. Yeah. Man, God, the decision-making, and now you wonder why <laughs> we, they are where they are, and you gave us some <laughs> great reasons why. Thank you very much for your time, Bob. Have a great rest of the summer. All right, guys, you too. Thank Take you. care. Let me know if you need anything. Yes, sir. Bob Thompson, Fox Sports CEO. They offered them the 